my biography on my Twitter page says um, I am a skeptic and an optimist. Um, I believe in science and infinite possibilities. And that kind of sums up what I'm going to be talking about today. What a world we could live in if we were a truly informed society. A society that, by and large, understood every facet of the social, political, environmental, economic realities that we face every day. Well, a news culture often indicates its potential for being truly informed. Hi, my name's Colleen Christie. I'm a news anchor, a broadcast journalist, if you will, and I'm, I'm a little hesitant to say that because I recently found out that broadcast journalists rank number six on the list of most despised professions. Yeah, we're just above tax auditors. That's right, most people like tax auditors better than broadcast journalists, yeah. Great. Um, it sort of feels like when Sally Field made her Oscar acceptance speech, but it's the opposite. You hate me. You really hate me. <laughs> well, not me personally. Give me a few minutes. You might. Um, but at least we're doing better than lawyers. They're at number three, so that gives me hope. Gives me hope. I anchor for CTV Vancouver, an affiliate of the number one network in Canada, and I got my start in news in a rather unusual way. I started in marketing and promotion, so it gives me a unique perspective on the business of news. You see, I've always understood that news is a product that needs to be sold, but it's a really important product. I grew up in a home where news was important. My mother would pour over the morning newspaper on days that she wasn't working. She knew all of the issues, all of the players, and she had a grade eight education. As a family, we would watch the nightly newscast together, and we actually paid attention. I think because my parents came from poverty, they were very aware of the importance of informing us and educating us. Conversations over the dinner table were often political, often heated. Please pass the gravy. I can't believe you're such a socialist. Would you like more potatoes? That sort of thing. Yeah. Back then, our choices for news sources were, well, they were a little more limited than they are now, that's for sure. But wherever we got our news, we pretty much trusted that it would be trustworthy and dependable. Boy, things have changed, haven't they? In this modern news age, Information is power, and never has our ability to leverage that power been more at risk. In the last 10 years, there's been a remarkable change in our news consumption habits, due in large part to the explosion of digital media. That explosion has created more competition, and it's changed our legacy platforms, being newspapers and television, and it's actually changed what we consider newsworthy to be. In a recent survey, you might find this interesting, nearly 90% of North Americans said they were hungry for their daily news. But get this, nearly 50% of them said they couldn't trust it. Trust is an issue, and I think part of that trust issue is wrapped up in our sense of bias in news. And yes, of course, with polarized news organizations like Fox News on the right and MSNBC on the left, it's absolutely clear that bias exists. But as a journalist on the inside, I think it's, a, it's an oversimplification to say that all media is biased. In fact, I propose to you today that the problem with media isn't bias at all. The problem with news today is you. And the question I put to you isn't which news you can trust, but can you trust yourself to consume it wisely? News, in essence, is 
factual storytelling. Every day, journalists attempt to share information through stories. But let's make something very clear from the get-go. There are essentially two sources, two kinds of sources for news. There is mainstream credible news, and then there's everything else. And based on your lack of trust, the line between the two must seem pretty blurry, blurry to you. Now, of course, there are exceptions. There are always exceptions. The simplest definition of credible news is information reported after a rigorous series of checks and balances to ensure accuracy and fairness. And most people consume their news every day without knowing that or even thinking about it. And I think it's really important that we understand the process. <clears throat> so, for example, in television, news ideas come from, well, anywhere and everywhere. And it's our assignment editor's job to assemble those ideas and create a, a, a potential list of the stories that we will cover. Now, the next step in the process might surprise you. We actually debate and discuss each one of those story ideas. A group of highly experienced, trained, knowledgeable, diverse individuals practically anybody in our newsroom who wants to participate, weighs the news value merits of each story. Is it something that our audience wants? Is it something that our audience needs? Next, we assign stories to our reporters, our boots on the ground, and they go out and they find facts, and they assemble those facts, and they provide context for the story. And yes, some stories are more complex than others, but Generally speaking, if at the end of the day, a news story doesn't have enough news value, or if it doesn't pass the sniff test, it doesn't make it air. And that's how most newsrooms throughout the world work. And for the most part, that process works. But you know what? The one thing we can't escape is the perception of bias. We fight very hard to avoid it, but we can't somehow avoid the perception of bias in our reporting. And let me give you an example. We're accused of two things whenever we co cover an election campaign. We are accused of simultaneously supporting the incumbent and supporting the challenger. It never fails. Never fails. And of course, we're not doing either. You see, mainstream news has no political agenda. What, you say? <laughs> it's absolutely true. Mainstream news has no political agenda. Yes, there is right-wing conservative news, and yes, there is its counterbalance on the left. But I'm talking about mainstream media. And for those of us who work in the middle, the very notion of partisan conspiracy Conspiracies is, well, it's absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> Except for that lunar landing, that was a total fake, never happened. Never happened. Now, of course, that's not the case with organizations which use narrative journalism to promote a particular ideology and political perspective. No, and they're harder to spot these days with the proliferation of online news sources that don't use journalistic checks and balances and so easily can be passed off as legitimate. And you know what? Mistakes that can be perceived as bias can be made. But I believe they're far less intentional than you might think. And when those mistakes are made, most credible media outlets adhere to their own self-discipline. The news media has been correcting errors along the way for more than 100 years, and whether to our general satisfaction or not, it has to be acknowledged that it certainly does happen. So discipline is a big part of the job, but it's not exactly the toughest part of the job for me personally. Now, in case you didn't get this already, when I go to work in the morning, I don't have to worry about being, hmm, infected, shot, kidnapped, tortured, raped, or executed, like some of my colleagues do. Shout out to the colleagues in the field who risk their lives every day.
Yeah, it's a calling. It's a calling. No, I got it pretty good, considering. Tough day at the office for me might be a bad hair day. But it's not tough for me, it's tough for you, because you have to look at it. You see? You see how that works? No, the hardest part of my job is keeping my mouth shut. Yeah, and I'm not talking about in our afternoon meetings where my colleagues would love it if I kept my mouth shut. No, I'm talking about when I'm presenting facts, I can't telegraph my own personal opinions on divisive matters. I can't, I can't let that through. I can't risk it. As a communicator, it's my job to help you understand a story. It's not my job to tell you what to think. I can't risk it. We can't risk it. You see, the truth is, mainstream media can't afford to take sides. And I use the word afford on purpose. Bias is bad for business. Let me show you how the money works on that. We'll just follow the money. Our democratic society needs an independent news to keep us informed and free. And news, the news industry, needs consumers to survive. So, in television, consumers are viewers. The more viewers, the higher the ratings. The higher the ratings, the more ad revenues. Ad revenues maintain operating budgets. Operating budgets pay for journalists to gather information to keep us free. That's how it works. Any blatant bias on our part could potentially alienate vast numbers of our viewers. That's a bad idea. Bias is just bad business in the news business. Some recent studies have revealed some interesting statistics on our consumption habits. I should note that most of us still consume our news from television. But we're, we're branching out. A majority of North Americans now say they consume news on multiple platforms. Still, nearly 90% of us are consuming that news from one single news organization. So let me tell you what that looks like. I'll paint a picture for you. You're at home. You've got the TV on to CNN. You've got the uh, tablet open to CNN's web page. And you're following CNN's breaking news on your Twitter feed on your phone. And you have no social life. <laughs> Myopic? Yeah, perhaps, unless you got a thing for Wolf Blitzer. Hey, no judgment. <laughs> Here's the ironic part, though. In a survey done this year, North Americans said they feel more informed than ever before. Well, of course, we feel more informed. It feels like we're getting more news, but what we're getting is more of the same news, and it's coming at us faster and faster, and we know statistically that our attention spans are getting shorter and shorter. And that's changing the kind of news we want to consume. Trying to keep your attention has never been harder. In television, the average news story is less than two minutes long, sometimes as short as 20 seconds. Think about that. Wow. Boredom is your bias. And if we don't keep you engaged, you're going to leave. We don't want you to leave. In television, we spend all day gathering quality information that you can trust, even though 50% of you don't trust it. Your, your information dinner is served. And we throw in dessert, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Trending videos, you know, the bizarre, the wacky, the funny, they make it into most major newscasts now, and they're among the top-rated segments of those newscasts. It's true. It's true. Yeah. A caution. We are very aware of trivializing news, and we're very, very cautious not to. But we're competing with Jon Stewart, for goodness sake. We're dancing as fast as we can to keep you entertained and informed so that you'll stick around.
But you say, hey, digital news gives me what I want when I want it. And that's absolutely true, scarily so. Your online habits are watched, followed, and fed. With each click of the mouse, you leave a digital breadcrumb trail so that you can be fed more of the same. Yeah. And social media is contributing to your bias. It really is. Since 2009, traffic to social media news sites has gone up by 60 percent. A full 70 percent of people surveyed recently in North America said they use social media as a news source. Now, I got nothing, nothing bad to say about social media. I like it. Hey, Twitter's a fantastic tool for communicating and for delivering breaking news. But if you're using social media as your primary news source, you know, you got to be cautious because think about it. It's your neighbor or the person who works next to you who likes cat videos. They're your news director. <laughs> and, and you know what? Your editorial team on Facebook is only as good as your friends on Facebook. So true. And on Twitter, there is no news director. No, there really isn't. Hashtag competitive, hashtag sensational, hashtag Kim Kardashian. And I'm only throwing in Kim Kardashian because I'm hoping when somebody Googles her name, this TED Talk comes up. Yeah. Hashtag shameless. Yeah. Now, you are the subjective news curator of your world, and we know statistically that you like to get news from people who think like you do. It's a fact. And on top of that, being well-informed online takes, well, it, it requires more effort and more discipline on your part. You're only going to click on the things that look appealing to you, right? Think about it. It's kind of like going to a buffet. You're not going to get two salads. You're not. You're not. But, you know, you see those desserts sitting there. They look pretty good. Nobody's watching. Take two. What the heck? We're human. We like pie. <laughs> our personal preferences feed our biases, and our personal content curation supports them. By definition and design, digital media gives us more of what we already like. You, you create your own information playlist, if you will. It's kind of like, I don't know, it's like the songs up of news. The system feeds you more of what you want. Feels good, but how are you going to ever be exposed to something new? How are you going to see a different perspective? And if you keep listening to 8 on the 80s, how are you going to hear new music, for goodness sake? Come on, come on. Whether we realize it or not, our subconscious bias is driving our news consumption habits it's keeping us less informed than ever before. And you know what? <clears throat> we know what happens when our trust in media is at an all-time low. It means that our appetite to seek out new and a more varied variety of news sources diminishes, and our biases are strengthened. And we see that every day. You get camps over here, you got another camp over here. These guys aren't listening to these guys. They don't want to. There is no trust. It's all ego-driven, fear-based, heels dug in, no progress. We're behaving like children, except if we were children, we'd be punished. But in this sense, the people up who are behaving this way, they get their own TV shows or their own constituents, as the case may be. As artist activist Reuben Blades so eloquently put it, we risk becoming the best informed society that ever died of ignorance. So how do we achieve the promise of being a truly informed society when our own personal biases keep us locked in a feedback loop, giving us more and more of the same? Well, what would happen if, for example, we chose a second or third news source outside of our 
normal consumption habits? Well, more news diversity would make us better informed, certainly make us sound smarter. That comes in handy at weddings, bar mitzvahs, <laughs> TED Talk mixers. But sounding smart isn't the goal. That's not what this is all about. This is about freedom. And the news media is the guardian of our freedom. We hold authority to account. You hold us to account. And you're free to choose whatever news source you like, but if you're choosing more of the same, is that freedom? Getting news that reinforces your own beliefs feels good, but it's a false sense of security and one that doesn't promote greater growth or deeper understanding. And it certainly doesn't challenge us to challenge our own views. So how do we know if we're getting enough variety in our news diet? Well, if everything you're consuming makes you feel great, chances are you need to mix it up a little bit. And you know what? The news media needs to do its bit, too. We need to make news more relevant, particularly my branch, the news. You know, we need to help people understand why a story is important and how it affects them. Anybody can collect facts. We need to provide context. The old notion of, eat it, it's good for you, it just doesn't work anymore when one click away there's something more tantalizing. And if we lose you, we lose. And then we all lose. As iconic broadcast journalist Charlie Rose so beautifully put it, we learn from each other even when we disagree, especially when we disagree. The more we strengthen the virtues of tolerance, diversity, and understanding, we'll have a bulwark against the hatred and extremism that has wreaked so much havoc in this world. So I implore you, battle your biases. Empower yourself with more diverse news. And maybe, just maybe, we will have an informed society, a truly informed society, and enter a new age of enlightenment. Thank you.